Hi, Andy here. Wanted to highlight one of SUSE's fun new emerging products that we help sell and work with from a day to day, and I even use it at my home lab, and that's a tool called Harvester. Harvester, in case you don't know, is a hyperconverged, so you can run containers and VMs all in the same operating system. One of the cool things about it, it uses kubevert under the hood, it uses Longhorn for stateful storage across multiple nodes. Kind of wanted to show you how I deploy it and use it uh, in my home lab, and version 1.3 was released Friday morning. So it's a good time to kind of show how to go from nothing, fully booted, network booted, up and running, deploying VMs. I have a NUC in my closet, it's a Geekcom version of it, and I have a B-Link right here. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and start the booting process because it does take a few minutes and I'll talk through how I'm network booting and all that while it's up and running. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that. And go into the boot menu. And then select Pixie Boot. And what this is gonna do is this is actually gonna boot off of a virtual machine I've got running in my uh, my closet and I'm gonna go ahead and select the harvester installer and that's gonna take a second or two to load <clears throat> and uh, what I like I said is I'm gonna get that installer kicked off and running because it does take a few minutes to unpack come on Cool. There we go. Now we're into the installer. Um, <clears throat> it does have some requirements around cores and memory. We can go ahead and proceed without it. We're going to go ahead and create a new cluster. You can see that I have a terabyte drive. There's a persistence size we want. Um, basically, what this is for is this is for configuration. Uh, you know, like it says, persistent shares data, like system package container images, not the VM data. So we can go ahead and use that. Let's give it a host name. I like the word flux. Management NIC. So what we can do is we can select which NIC is running. Select that one. We're not doing a VLAN. We're doing active backup. Uh, I'm going to change this to static. Just because I know my network. And we're going to make that a slash 24. Gateway. And I'm not going to worry about MTU. Okay, when you're in setting up Harvester, uh, it wants to create a VIP, a uh, virtual interface for all of the nodes. So it can be another IP, it can be DHCP. When you're in a single node, it it's, doesn't matter because there's still a static for the node. DNS, I've got 1.3, and then I'm going to also do 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 for Google's. Right, so again, back to the VIP mode. I'm going to set it to static, 1.6.8.1.9. My keyboard's off at an angle, that's why I'm typing weird. Cluster token. So this is where if we were going to join multiple nodes, we would want to give a token. So then when we join, we just pass in that token. I like chicken is my favorite token. Password. You can use whatever you want. And all my home lab demos, it's capital P-A-2-2-W-R-D because there's a funny story behind it. You have to, you have to ask me about it. Okay, so with the Harvester installer, it's actually pretty interesting. You go and answer a bunch of questions, and it creates a config YAML, and then it applies the config YAML on the install. You can absolutely automate this with iPixie. You can pass that config YAML in to automatically go ahead and answer all these things and just install. So think about how to automate all of this um, long term. Okay, great. That's install, and that's off to the races. Let me show you how I'm, I've got this set up. So right now I've got Harvester in my home lab uh, and it's a geek com. It's another NUC. And on it, I have a virtual machine called Netboot. Okay. This Netboot virtual machine is running the Netboot XYZ container, which is then serving out that menu. So I don't know if you remember that menu. It was like <clears throat> graphical install, right, for Liberty and Rocky and Harvester. What I'm doing for Harvester is literally just using the uh, VM Linux, the init RD, as well as the squash FS, and I'm telling it where the ISO is, which happens to be served out on the same VM. 
and we can go to local assets. This might take a sec. Yeah, you can see that I've got these served out through an HTTP service. That's what NetBoot XYZ provides, right? So it makes it really easy to kind of serve this out and maintain it, okay? Let's see where this will take some time. Um, what I'm gonna do, let's go through, let's go through how the, my first node set up and, we'll, and then it'll make sense when we recreate it. So volumes, you can see my NetBoot volume. We can go through images. So these are static images. These are ISOs or QCOWs that I wanna use to deploy VMs with. In this case, I've got Rocky 9, I've got 8 for testing, CentOS 7, 9 for testing for a customer, Liberty, that's something new that we're working on at SUSE, and OpenSLES just for fun. Okay, if we go into networking, now traditionally, if you look here, you're going to want to separate out your data plane from your management plane, only to ensure that you've got the necessary bandwidth and you're not creating a security risk, so to speak, in terms of, of network overlap. For my home lab, I'm gonna put my VMs on my management network just because uh, I only have one network and I'm not in the mood for VLAN tagging. So I've created a VM called VN, VLAN1. It's untagged, again, no VLAN tagging, and I've put it on my management NIC. Ideally in a production environment, multiple NICs, multiple networks, you put the VM network onto a uh, on, onto an additional NIC slash additional physical network. Uh, traditionally, you can manage it could be one gig, your data plane could be 10 gig, or better if you've got more production ready stuff. One of the other things I kind of want to highlight here under advanced, uh, let's check where we're at. Yep, still going, it does take some time. Uh, under advanced, SSH keys, so obviously you're going to want to SSH in your Linux nodes. Templates is good. Um, PCI devices, I don't have any, but Harvester does support PCI pass-through. So that means that you can say, uh, like you could pass a GPU from the host up through into the VM. And I do have a video um, highlighting that. I did it about a, you know six, eight months ago. Uh, Harvester, notice I've got Harvester 1.2.1 on my one home lab NUC. And we're gonna be, like I said, we're deploying 1.3 today, okay? We've got storage classes, secrets. There's a few settings here. Um, this is where you can go and set up uh, all kinds of things. SSL certs, um, upgrade URLs. Uh, there's additional stuff you can set in here. But what I really wanna highlight is these templates. And these templates, there's a couple that are by default and we'll see when we configure the new node. But this one right here, um, I'm go ahead and view the config. The nice thing about these templates is I can go ahead and say, I want two CPU, four memory. Here's the SSH key. This is the volume you're gonna use, in this case, Rocky 9. This is the network I want you on. I don't, I'm, because we've got a single node. Node scheduling and VM scheduling isn't a big deal. Advanced options, this is the fun part. So this is all cloud in it. And it basically, it's pretty easy. It's pretty standard with cloud providers where you can say, okay, these are the packages I want you to run. I want you to run this, this command. In this case, I'm disabling IPv6. Um, SSH password auth true, so that allows users to SSH in with a password. Uh, that was a bug that pit me on a Harvester workshop. And then I just set up a bunch of user accounts. I just set up the root account with my SSH key. And then I override with an extra rancher and Clemenco account um, just for redundancy. Okay, and that's pretty straightforward. So let's go back to the dashboard here. Let's see where we're at with the install. I think now's a good place to well let me show you real quick before we go so if you go to github harvester harvester you can see the release notes these are the files i was talking about right the iso the amds oh cool looks like the node rebooted um the net install i want to point something out between the full iso and the net install iso if you are online in other words your machine will have access to the internet the net iso will go and pull the container images for kubernetes from the internet Okay, you could end up in a rate limiting issue, so be careful with that. I'm gonna do the full ISO because part of this testing is to build a harvester workshop where we can set up 15 machines and just all network boot them and go. So I would go with the full ISO. And then we've got some installation instructions. See, it says here, harvester can be installed pixie booted, right? Upgrade, highlights, VG, VGPU support, two node clusters for high availability, 
manage DHCP. So that's where you can manage DHCP on the in on the VM network. And there's a whole bunch of other enhancements and bug fixes. And just to highlight the documentation, yeah, except technical ones. Um, this talks about how to do it. If you're curious how to do the netboot, feel free to comment, and I will go ahead and uh, post my netboot XYZ steps. There is not a whole lot of steps to do it, which is pretty cool. Okay. Right now, so the, so you can see that the node rebooted. We're now into Harvester 1.3, and it's setting itself up. What it's really doing right now, it's unpacking a lot of those images um, that are used for running, you know, Kubert, Longhorn. There's a kind of a mini rancher underneath the hood if that GUI looked familiar. What I'm going to do right now, okay, so we have the one IP, and it's still setting up node. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to fast forward this segment. I'm going to leave it up so you can see it, but I'm going to fast forward this segment and we will okay, uh, we're back. So back it took it. about 15 minutes for the node to come ready, ready. Again, this is a NUC, it's a Ryzen 7, uh, 5000 series. Uh, you know, obviously for production, you'd have much, much bigger CPUs and faster drives and stuff. So it would take probably a lot less time. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead. It did say bootstrap password. That password was the one we entered in the GUI, sorry, in the TUI uh, for the install. But now we're gonna go ahead and copy this password. We're gonna allow, I always uncheck anonymous stats and check the EULA. We're gonna go ahead and connect in. And there we go, now we're saved and now we're in. So now you can see we're running version 1.3.0 and you can see our host is named Flux. A couple of things we need to do, right? So we've netbooted, just to highlight, we've netbooted it, did a network install, Pixie install. What we need to do now is we need to set up that management network for the VN LAN, VLAN one for the containers. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to networks, gonna go to VM networks and hit create. And we're gonna call it VLAN one and we're gonna make it untagged. Right. And then we say which physical network. So it's going to be the management network and hit create. Okay, great. Now we've tied those two together and the VMs are ready. Uh, number two. So that's the first thing we need. Number two, I'm going to go back here and cheat. Let's go to images and Rocky nine. Do I have the URL? I don't. So let's pick a different one. Actually, I will go ahead and pull it now. Uh, Rocky cloud image. I believe it's under cloud images. Uh, nope. Don't you hate when you forget where it is? Rocky. We can do this one. Uh, maybe up to nine. Because you always want nine, right? So nine. ISOs. X86. That's not it. I'm being dumb. I usually have these yeah, download. This is where I always go download. And then it says, see where it says minimal Rocky nine alternative images. And then I go down here to the generic cloud open stack. Instead of downloading it, I'm just going to uh, copy the link address. I'm going to go into harvester itself. I'm going to go to images and I'm going to hit create. Call that Rocky. Learn to spell Rocky Nine, and I'm going to give it the URL. I'm not worried about the checksum. And I'm going to go ahead and hit create. <clears throat> so the machine itself is pulling it down. I can navigate away from this window, and I will. Uh, next thing I need to do is get an SSH key. One thing I'm going to do is these are out of the box uh, templates. You don't actually need them. Um, not that there was an easy way to do it. Let me just go ahead and delete them, just so it cleans it up. Because like I said, we're going to create our own template like I had in my home lab. And we have no SSH key. So let's put an SSH key in first. Give it my name. And we'll go ahead and pull it off of this one because it's not a big deal. There's my SSH key. So now I've got an SSH key in place. Now I need to go create the template. So we go back here in templates. And what I'm going to do is I'm just I'm going to view the template. 
and it's under the advanced configs that I want. So I want basically this cloud emit. Copy that. So we're going to go here and create a new template. We're going to call it Rocky. Okay. I want, let's go two cores, four gigs of RAM. Select my SSH key, the volume. We can leave that blank for them. Actually, it's not, it's going to wait. We're still waiting for the image to download. 88%, 93. That's why I couldn't select an image there for the volume. Cool, completed. Let's go back. Advanced, templates, create. Rocky, again, two cores, four gigs of RAM, my, my key. Under volume, now we can select Rocky. Because uh, it's a terabyte, I like doing 80 gigs. That's usually pretty good. Networks. We need to select, instead of the management network, the VLAN one. So now it's on the forward network and it can get an IP. And you can see you've got a lot of options here. Bridged, master rate. I just put it on bridge. That way it's on my host LAN and I don't have to worry about, um, I don't have to worry about any type of natting or anything like that. Again, we're not going to worry about scheduling or any of the scheduling. We'll go to advanced options, right? We're not going to worry about that. We're going to replace We're gonna go ahead and replace the cloud config with the one I copied over from another one. Again, I'll post a link to this. I have a gist with all this information that I use. It's just some standard stuff I use, like sudo, apple release, bind, quemu agent, and go ahead and hit create. Cool. So now we've got the template set up, we've got the network set up, we've got the image set up, and we've got the SSH key set up. Now, let's go ahead and hit create, and let's call it tubes for YouTube. I'm gonna use a template and select Rocky. See how it pre-populated everything? And we're gonna go ahead and hit create. And this will take a minute. Don't worry about it saying on schedule. That means it's just trying to find a node to run on. And let me make sure my audio's working. Yep, sweet, audio's working. Okay. Um, and like I said, it takes a minute. It's gonna assign it to a node. And there we go, now it's running. One of the cool things we can do is we can open the serial console or the web VNC and we can see it actually starting to boot. <clears throat> do, 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 do. Yep, there it goes. Okay. Uh, like I said, you know, NUCs are great for a home environment, but obviously in a production environment, you'd want uh, something beefier. I used to run this on a Dell R630 with like 40 cores, and it was quick. It was nice but the server was too loud in my closet. So I don't have a basement here. So it had to go. Great, so you can see we're logged in. I mean, the system's already up and running and I have an IP, I'm gonna log in. Right, IP A, we can see the IP address, 127. Um, here, let me show you kind of the fun, part of the reason why you want that SSH key in. I'm gonna bring up my terminal. And boom, we're in. So that, that's really kind of the advantage of that and having you know things like sudo there, but I log in as root. Uh, Apple's there, so I can install like JQ and HTOP and fun tools like that. Actually, let's, that's not a bad one. I should probably add it to my standard, like just go ahead and install HTOP. Come on. It's having issues with Apple right now. Fun. Uh, cool. Well, we'll let that run. So hopefully that kind of shows some of the steps required to deploy Harvester. And actually part of the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to swap my NUX now. So this one is going to be my home one at 1.3. Uh, one thing to note, Harvester 121 cannot be upgraded to one to 1.3.0. 122 is going to come out to bridge the gap. They changed a couple things underneath in terms of the Kubernetes itself. I think they went from 126 to 127 Kubernetes, so that's why they, um, that's why they, there is no upgrade path. So that's why I installed new. Uh, I'll put a whole bunch of stuff in the show notes about the template I use and some of the links. Uh, hopefully, this was helpful in understanding kind of what Harvester is, how you can interact with it to run VMs. Um, oh, I forgot to show one last thing: the magic key. So this is the tilde key, just to kind of prove to you that I've got Kubernetes under the hood. 
you can actually bring up a console where you want kubectl get node. And we see our flux. Kubecti <laughs> loopctl, that's funny. Kubectl get pod. And that shows the default namespace and we can see our VM running as a pod. But if we do dash A, we can see all the pods in the system. So like I said, there's Longhorn, there's Kube system. Um, yeah, like I said, it's running 127.10. And let's just for giggles, go back. Oh, I got to go like host and then we can do tilde. And just to show you on a 121, it is 120. Oh, it's 125. So there you go. So they have to bridge the gap to 126 and then, one, and then 127. Cool. Uh, like, share, subscribe. You know what to do. Feel free to reach out to me, comment, send me emails. Uh, if you've got any questions or any ideas for the next video, hope this was fun. Thanks for watching.